Johnny Manziel. Speaking of someone Speaking who of a, <laughs> of a jib cut. Yes. <laughs> so this dude's jib was a real was a real um it was a real thing. So I forgot a lot about this story, admittedly. I forgot that Johnny Manziel's jib looked like the cut of a kid who was granted a wish. Yeah. Like, he does not seem like a prom king quarterback. He's not Tom Brady. He's not tall. He's not big. He's not strong. He's, he looked and acted like a little kid who got a blank check upon which he wrote, I want everything. It's like if a trust fund kid got access early. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And actually, the whole Johnny Manziel was from a rich family was a lie. That was one of the big revelations that I, mean, I think there were suspicions around, but this confirmed it for good. Yeah, so it came out that when all the autograph stuff was happening, his buddy, who was also like a 19-year-old, was in charge of the oh, operation. A 19-year-old yeah. whose nickname was Uncle. Yeah, Uncle really Nick. weird. I don't Nate. understand that. Really oh, Uncle weird. Nate, I'm sorry. But when he was going on all these like private jets and you know hanging out with celebrities, they wanted a way to explain it. That was it. You know, hey, we're selling autographs. So he said that Johnny Manziel came from an oil family, and everyone believed it because he acts like a kid from an oil family. <laughs> and it's such a good excuse because that's so yeah. vague and ambiguous, and yet the, like you hear about those types of things in Texas, and you're like, oh sure. I've, that guy's rich, yeah, probably oil money. I wouldn't believe that Roy came from oil money, but I would believe that Johnny Manziel came from oil money. What, what, what's that mean? I don't know. The point is, Johnny Manziel got to trade off of it. the stereotype of, oh, plausibly, he's just some white quarterback who has family money. That's why he's hanging out in all of these places on private jets, making all this money. And so when the NCAA came calling, that was the excuse they concocted. They wrote checks on behalf of his grandfather, because he would feed him the money. It was a whole scheme. It was a great lie, to Jess's point. Race um, is a part of everything, or at least the way that I view everything. I don't want to force race into this conversation in a way that's not necessary. But the documentary was not about that, but I couldn't help but uh, be aware of the influence of all of that. Yes. And, and how he was treated. And not that he was treated super well, but how he was received in um, Texas Station. They kind of made it clear that he was up to some tomfoolery and no one seemed to really care because the word, the phrase that they used was he was one of us. And they, it, it was kind of framed as it could be, he's from Texas. But actually, it kind of felt like... And while now it feels like we're at a place in NFL history where drafting um, athletic black quarterbacks is a thing in the first round that is more acceptable, it didn't feel like we were we were at that place then. And I had a mission for Pablo in his show. I need you guys to find this unhoused person that told Jimmy Haslam <laughs> to draft Johnny Manziel because Johnny Manziel was not a first round projection and my belief is that Jimmy Haslam saw Johnny Manziel and was like ooh and then he said you, ooh I like that jib I love that jib and how do you justify getting a jib that's not qualified uh, somebody that no one can ever find told me to do it <laughs> so we were talking about the jib that Jimmy Haslam owner of the Browns saw in Johnny Manziel and I want to recap this story that Dominique was alluding to about how Allegedly, an unhoused person was the source for Jimmy Haslam that convinced him to draft Johnny Manziel in the first round of the NFL draft. And he, what he had told Sal Palantonio at the time, Jimmy Haslam did, was, quote, here in Cleveland, everywhere I go, people know me. And I was out to dinner recently, and a homeless person was out on the street, looked up at me, and said, quote, draft Manziel. End quote. Do you think Jimmy Haslam has ever respected the opinion of an unhoused person before? <laughs> this is such, so, such an unbelievable tale. Like, bruh, you saw a super athletic white quarterback sliding in the draft, and you was like, I need to get him. How do I justify this? Blame it on an unhoused that's, person that's, that no one can ever find. Also that's, a person with incredible fame and popularity yeah. at the time who I believe his jersey sales like skyrocketed Bananas. right after he was drafted, and, and people were – 
Really, really, really interested in seeing him succeed in the NFL. There was a large swath of people that saw how electric he was and bought into the whole Johnny Football oh, he persona. Was an incredible college that player. thought he would be the savior at in Cleveland, despite right. the fact that most people that watched a lot of you know college football and did quarterback analysis thought he wasn't going to be that good in the pros. And that homeless person grew up to be Hugh Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Amin's here. So one of the things, I mean, that we were just recapping was how good some of the lies that were told to prop up Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. And so the homeless unhoused person, unhoused with a Z person, that is one aspect of it. But the oil money being fake, that part was such a brilliant concoction by Uncle Nate, his 19-year-old accomplice slash friend who was his manager, responsible for getting him out of trouble with the NCAA. Wait. The dude's name is Uncle Nate. Yep. And he's 19, he was 19 at the time. Yep. Oh, man. I, that was Dominique's. I want to party with that guy, man. <laughs> yeah. oh, By the way, there are photos in this documentary. They made a list. They made lists of, like, what are your goals? It was all, like, oh. hang out with Drake. Hang out with Snoop Dogg. It was just, like, all the famous people checking off lists. And they did all of it, it seems. I don't know if other people had this, like, practice, but you're supposed to, like, write down your goals. And, and they did that. But the goals were absurd manifestation the goals, <laughs> the goals were be mentioned in a drake song yes check <laughs> one of the goals it's like what are you doing and so the the whole the dishonesty and honest or not honesty the dishonesty of them at that time is juxtaposed with the unethical nature of the ncaa so you find that they're positioned as heroes for part of it but I do, in defense of the filmmakers, it does not feel like they are trying to create some redemption story, which I appreciated. They did not frame this as, this that was Johnny then, and now he has got it all together. Like, they close it by pretty much, like, implying he gonna be back to this foolishness. And that's the way that I took it. Uh, wait a second. But he came on this show and he felt like he had turned over a leaf and, and grown and matured, right? The big thing about him coming on this show. So Monday he was on the show and Chris Cody asked him a question about whether he was buying, you know, his teammates urine to pass drug tests. And he got so mad. He was not happy with that question at all. In the documentary, his agent said he did that when he was like to Chris, he was like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't know where that stuff gets made up. And then it was literally in the documentary the next day. So he always he owes our boy Chris an apology. He's back to his shenanigans, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, Johnny Football, back at it again. Another lesson you learn from this documentary is if you cut ties with your agent real bad, make sure your agent isn't good at storytelling. Because this dude, Eric Burkhardt, I believe is his name, was giving up everything. Yeah, he was the one who talked about the drug test. He was very clearly like, I'm, I'm excited to talk. This will be fun. I believe we have investigative reporter Chris Cody on tape to listen to. When you, when you look back at, like, regrettable conversations and spots you had to put almost teammates in because they're trying look to help at, you and cover things hands. up. Like, I saw you had other quarterback, go, another quarterback at Texas A&M taking and passing drug tests for you. Like, what put us in there, that Ooh, conversation? Asking a player to do that, like it was yeah, that. See, I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that or think that happened whatsoever. So, you know, there may be a piece from you know my buddy's Nate side, my buddy Nate side, where he saw something like that or thought he did, but um, in no way, shape, or form um, did that ever happen. Did I ever go to another quarterback or another person on our team um, and ask him to do that to pass a drug test? So, you know, there's a lot that gets lost in translation. Um, this documentary is pretty spot on, but to kind of harp on that one thing, uh, that never happened whatsoever for one second in the a You know, Coach Sumlin. I think my favorite part about that is Chris Cody's impression of Dan Lebatar. That's what he's doing. You guys know that, right? Journalist over he's here. This is like he was doing the uh, Italian speaking put, hands. He did, he did put me there. Yeah. Like, it, it did seem like, and maybe it's because we love Chris, and I feel bad because Loose the Tooth set this up as a uh, – Chris, like, celebration, and all we're doing in here yeah. is laughing at him performing interviewer. Yeah, yeah, like, he's trying, like, but this is, yeah, there it is. 
This is <laughs> also where he's like, put me there. I can, I don't Mama know, at some mia. point. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. What I gotta do to get another ass helping? This is, no, this is good for Chris. We need to make this He's the learning. new meme and get the one of him looking like someone who hates when players kneel for the anthem off Twitter. This can, yeah. this can replace that. No, that one's that. gotta live a little longer. That one's too good. That it one's way really, too good. It is really good. I gotta see that. I don't know that one. Oh, oh you don't know that God. one? You don't know how Chris Cody looks like one of those uh, avatars in that collage of avatars? It's a, about it's a photo people. from when he shaved his beard oh. in Salt Lake City, and it's a it's a yeah. tough look. At for some it. point, I mean, I don't want I don't want to go back to it now but at some point i just want to listen to chris parts of that part of that again because it's not just the physical demonstration it's us knowing how chris actually talks <laughs> yeah. and watching him perform interviewer can that, we play the beginning of that one more time to show dominique's point there the if we could that would be oh, there it is. buy some time yeah feel, feel, feel vamp when you when you look back at like regrettable conversations and spots you had to put Ooh, almost teammates hands, in because they're it. trying to help you, you rap hands up <laughs> Like, I saw you had yeah. other quarterback, can we another put, quarterback can we at Texas take A&M and taking and passing like drug Spider-Man tests. Music like behind what, it? Put us or in there, that beat. conversation, oh, yeah, no. asking a player to do that. Like, it was yeah, that? See, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree manja, with manja. that. Manja, manja. I don't care. No, yeah, 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 we, we don't, don't care about Johnny We lied to. Again. My favorite word that Johnny Menzel did say, though, in that bit, that was the big giveaway, was... The adverb necessarily. Yeah, I don't necessarily. <laughs> Anyone know. who says the word necessarily is just giving them the sh- the slightest shaft of sunlight <laughs> to give. Maybe I am telling the truth. I, I don't agree at all. Like that. That's another giveaway. He also said, I don't think that happened. Yeah. It's like, so then who thinks it happened if it wasn't you? Also, why do you need uh, somebody to pee for you? I mean, the, the drug the- tests in college are administered by the team. They don't have uh, maybe things to change, but if I remember correctly, when I was in school, the team administered the drug tests, and which means Johnny Manziel was not going to get suspended, no matter what he did. <laughs> he was gonna be all right, guys.